John 2. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from twenty to thirty gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. This, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed in Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. Bring new research when it comes to women, alcohol, and the risk of cancer. Dr. Nancy Snyderman is NBC's chief medical editor. Nancy, good morning to you. Hi, Meredith. I feel like for years we've been told if you have one drink a day, right. specifically red wine, it's good for your health. Now we're hearing that all of this wine can actually cause cancer. Confusing. It is confusing. And I think one of the problems is that one drink a day of dark alcohol that's good for your heart or your brain was never meant to be a health guideline. It was just something that we found that, in fact, you know, the chemicals in it tend to be to be good for your heart. But now the study in, in Britain of over one, almost 1.3 million women showed that women who have one drink a day, whether it's a Chardonnay or a beer or a glass of scotch, doesn't it doesn't matter. What matter. Kind of, okay. doesn't matter. Even that innocuous glass of white wine increases the risk of breast cancer of the breast, liver, rectum, and the upper aerodigestive tract, which means everything from your mouth to your stomach. And then they estimate, because women in Britain drink similarly to women in the United States that 5% of all cancers among American women in mid-age are in fact due to alcohol consumption. But you also say that there's nothing really new in this study. I think this is cumulative. Mm -hmm. We've, you know, for years bandied around the fact that alcohol consumption, three to five drinks a week, increases the risk of breast cancer. Now they're saying, you know what, there may be no safe at all. There, in fact, one drink a day one drink um, every two days may be enough to bump it up. And they're also expanding not just from breast cancer, but to all these other cancers. Okay. So I think it leaves people sort of in a quandary. Do I worry about my heart and my brain, or do I worry about the risk of well, cancer? Well, what do you do with this information then? I think you take it with a grain of salt. The reality is men get a free pass here. Men metabolize alcohol differently than women. And there is, that seems from this in a rather definitive way, a carcinogenic effect to alcohol. So, I personally will have a glass of red wine when I have a meal, because to me that's part of the meal, and you, and you have that glass of red wine with great respect. However, if I'm in fact worried about my cancer risk, and I'm a middle-aged woman, and you really don't enjoy alcohol, and you really don't need it, you might say, you know what, for me, I'm not going to take this alcohol, but perhaps I'll talk to my doctor about taking an aspirin a day to keep my arteries clear. I think you have to sort of weigh the pros and cons, but the study was well done and it is rather definitive. Is, is it a greater trigger if you have a history of cancer in your family? No one has looked at that. Yeah. What they really did look at was al absolute alcohol consumption. The one sort of not so great part about this study was they didn't look at a drink a day or seven drinks on one day, but they averaged it out. And I think the reality is here, if you want to drink alcohol, know why you're drinking it, don't drink alone, consider it part of a food group, but recognize that everything you put in your mouth has its pros and cons. Your brain may be a little better, your heart may be a little bit better, but if you're in fact you're at risk for breast cancer or any other cancer and you're at midlife, you may be taking a little bit of a risk. All right, Dr. Nancy. Simon, I wish I had better you. news. This is really weigh it both ways and use some common sense. Okay, thank you so you much. You bet, Meredith.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر قل فيهما إثم كبير قل فيهما إثم كبير ومنافع للناس وإثمهما أكبر من نفعهما ويسألونك ماذا ينفقون قل العفو كذلك يبين الله لكم الآيات لعلكم تتفكرون 